What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, coach of your Montreal MyLotic, bringing you our week six battle for the CGT, the Champions of Galar Tour. We are back after picking up a nice W last week. We're trying to go for two in a row, continue our win streak, and hopefully climb our way up the standings. Right now, there's a massive log jam between first and seventh. Honestly, between like second and seventh. Right now, it looks like uh, Dr. Slacking is kind of like separating himself a bit from the pack. I think he's the only coach with one loss at the moment, if I'm not mistaken. And that's pretty damn scary because I think we have to play him later on in the season. Regardless, we are bunched up right now. There's a bunch of coaches right now that are right three and two, two and three, and this week could make them like basically all even. And we need to make sure we get the win here because if we don't get the win, then we're gonna fall down towards the eight, nine, 10 seed instead of going up towards the two, three or four seed. And definitely wanna make sure we can continue while only having two losses under our belt. But let's go ahead and jump into it because we're playing against Gravy and the Vancouver Titans this week. Their team. It's a great team, that's what it is. Uh, they have Mew. They also have access to Urshifu Rapid Strike, my baby, Volcarona, Ferrothorn, Badmon, fuck that Pokemon, <laughs> Noivern, there's a Glarian Weezing, a Magmortar, not Magmortar, Rhyperior, that's the one. There's a Vanillex, which is kind of annoying for my team, Electivire, as is only electric immunity outside of the uh, Magmortar. Rhyperior, jeez, <laughs> what is up with me today? And then of course there's a Greedence as well, because uh, um, obviously it's, it's Jack, It's he likes Greedence. Makes sense, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and jump into it. Honestly, the biggest threat to my team, Mew super scary, a setup set is very, very strong. Bandit or Shifu is super scary as well. Volcarona, not as much. Favorite one you gotta get rid of, but it's not like the end of the world. I just need to make sure it's gone or weakened. That's really the big thing. It's pretty important for my late game situation. The Vanillus is kind of annoying as well. Uh, Specs, Scarf, Light Screen, not Light Screen, Light Clay with the Roar Veil is super scary as well. There's uh, Rhyperior, which is kind of annoying. And then Greedon is a Ghost Resist or Immunity rather in this case. For his team which has no other answers to ghost types because he has a grand total of zero dark type on his roster so fingers crossed see if we can get the work done i'm hoping that we can we're gonna need it like i said we're gonna need to have a good game we're gonna need to get a win here last time we played and we para hacks them to death basically we just hacks them out and uh i don't want that i want to have just a good clean game it's gonna be a lot of fun and hopefully it's gonna be a good game because again greatest thing up late to play this game so let's go ahead and jump into it starting off with our very first mod it is going to be our check to the urshifu it is celine dion the prima arena Scald, Moonblast, Flip Turn, and Encore. We have Encore here, but it's not necessarily for what you think. Encore might be thought of as a way to, uh, I guess, handle the Ferrothorn if it's locked into Rocks, for example, or locked into Knockoff, for example. No, it's there specifically for Mew. The reason being is if Mew comes in, I'm probably clicking Encore against it first, like first and foremost, because if it goes for a Dragon Dance or an Agility or a Calm Mind, at least that way I can lock it into that and deal with it in a different way. So if I can lock it into a move with Encore, flip turn around on it, I'll be in a pretty good shape. I feel like that's the best option that I really have for it at this point on my team. And with the Rocky Helmet, it allows us to find out, number one, is the Urshifu Rabbit Strike going to be protected pads or not? If it is pads, great. Knowledge has been given, received, that's the one, and it barely can 3 account me. It's almost never going to 3 account me, ever. And that's pretty important because we do resist its dual stab. If it is banded, we take two hits from it from full, which is very nice, of course. I'll read off what we have for notes. Prim takes two Jolly Bander Shifus, Surging Strikes, or Close Combats. Helmet is there for obvious reasons, of course. We take a plus two Timid Giga Drain from the Volcarona, and we also take a Modest Specs Freeze Dry from the Vanillix. Super important here because Vanillix is a really big threat. Look at this team. Outside of Ferrothorn, Moonblast and Scald just shred him. It just destroys him. And the reason we're running Scald over Surf is because I need to make sure that I get some burns. If I can burn the switch into this, the Mew, the Ferrothorn, the Greedent, those are really the main three, then we're in a really good spot because none of those really want to be burned. Obviously, Calm Mind Mew is okay with being burnt, but if it's Calm Mind Mew, then that's one less thing for me to worry about because it's not going to be boosting its speed stat, which is just good general knowledge for me to have pretty much at all times. As soon as I know that, I'm happy. If I know it's leftovers, good. That means I can really go for Shadow Balls against it because I don't want to proc a weakness policy and that'd be very, very scary for this matchup. It's just... It, it would not be good for me, and uh, as, as Jay is and Jack is messaging me, um, uh, I'm just messaging him right now. I am doing TB V less than 10 min. All right, so we gotta speed through this a bit. That means all right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into our next mon, okay? Which is going to be Roku our Dragapult. Now the Dragapult here is pretty solid. Obviously, it's a Pult. Best one on the format. Really good. I think Jack had the second pick overall, or the third pick, and he went with Mew. So. I'm actually pretty cool with having Pult in this matchup because it's very strong. Shadow Ball, like I said before in the earlier portion of the team builder, he has one immunity to Shadow Ball, but no resists at all. So we're running Spell Tag, pretty clear, pretty straightforward. Flamethrower is there as a way to hit the Ferrothorn for four times effective damage. And same thing with Scald for the Rhyperior. 
The reason we're running Scald over something like Surf is because either way, we're not getting the KO on the Rhyperior. So this way we have a chance to burn things, which is very nice. If I can burn the Mew, let's say it's potentially a Mew that might be weakness policy. We don't know this against my Dragapult and I go for Scald and I can burn that thing. That's perfect. That's so good for us. So we need that chance as well. Greedon getting the burn on that too is very nice. Dragon Arts is there as, well, there's two situations. Number one is there to hit a Volcron that's been boosting up. If it has been boosting up, then Dragon Darts will do more damage unless it goes for will o -Wisp. But if it goes for will o -Wisp with Clever Dance, then it's missing out on one coverage move that it desperately needs. It really needs fire, it really needs grass, and it really needs psychic or flying coverage. One of those ways to hit me and it's basically got a way to win the game, uh, assuming it hits all of its attacks and it's boosted up enough. So I want to make sure we had an option for uh, especially defensive or defensive Volcarona, whatever that got bulked up enough for the special attack, special defense, and speed. And Dragon Darts is exactly that for us. Our speed on this set, usually I creep like I go super, super conventional with my creeps. I usually say, you know what, I'm going to creep for max speed Noivern in this case. I'm not doing that. I'm creeping for Noivern, creeping a Scarf Primarina or Scarf Pangoro. That's what I'm doing here, and it may not be the best option. But we're going with that because I want to free up a bit more EVs and I didn't think that he'd go max speed. I'll be honest, I don't think so. The only thing that kind of stresses me out a bit is if he decides to run speed for a modest Vicavolt at plus two after an agility. And I'll be honest, offensive throat spray agility Vicavolt crossed my mind this matchup. It's decent here, but I'm not bringing it and I'm hoping that he doesn't prep for that because then it would mean that the fastest mon, I would definitely be the fastest mon on the team. That's, that's basically it. I want to make sure I'm faster than it, but I want to have a little bit more offensive capability into my attack, which I thought was pretty important. Other than that, though, we do take a plus two Volcarona Psychic from full. We don't take a plus two uh, Hurricane. We do take plus one, I believe. Uh, we also take two Jolly Scarf or Shifu's Surging Strike. So if it's Scarfed, we'll take two hits from that, which is super nice. We are resisting one stab and immune to the other, which is very good for our team. So yeah, that's going to be our Dragapult. A very good mod here, hoping it can carry us this week. Our win, con our win condition is definitely this thing. Our whole game plan is to break so that Pulse can win. I definitely think our team has the capabilities to do that. Our next mod is going to be a defensive answer to quite a few things on the team. The Moltres here. Moltres is good. Don't get me wrong. But there's so many things it has to do this week. And I don't know how effective it's going to be. And the problem that I'm facing with this is if he gets in the Urshifu for free. If he gets in the Rhyperior for free against it. Then I'm not in a good spot. If I can burn the Rhyperior or, or weaken the Urshifu or burn that thing as well. Then oh my god I'm in an amazing position. I'm in such a good spot. I just gotta be careful. Mystical Fire is our attacking move of choice. Mystical Fire is fantastic. Reason being, one, it lowers the special attack set of a Mew if it's like a Calm mindset, but it also lowers the special attack of a Volcarona when it's definitely going to be going for Quiver Dances. Also does a shit ton of damage to the Ferrothorn, which is, just in case you didn't know, super important for our game plan. We can also weaken the Weezing, the Noivern, and the Manilix, all of which want to run special attacks and are going to be firing off attacks against us. And attacks are going to be doing a good amount of damage, but if I can weaken them with Mystical Fire, I'll be put into a really strong position. Willis is there as a way to come and basically check a physical Mew, a, or obviously our Shifu. Uh, we can hit the Rhyperior as well, and I guess basically anything else we want to chip on, which is just very nice in general. U-turn, obviously, and then Roost kind of needed as well. We need to have as much uh, momentum pressure that we can put onto his team with our set so that Dragapult, Dragapult can just go ahead and get the win for us. So that's kind of the game plan here, and hopefully we can get it done, because Moltres is super important. We have Boots, obviously he has what? Ferrothorn, Mew, Rhyperior, all of which are really good rockers and can get up rocks pretty easily against a lot of my teams, so we have to be very careful and make sure we keep our boots on us. I know he has a few knockoff users. He's got the uh, the Mew and the Ferrothorn being the big ones, and yeah, so hopefully we can make sure we can keep our boots around. It'll be pretty, pretty important for us. Our next one is going to be, actually no, before I do that, let's talk a bit more about Moltres and talk about what it does. Moltres has speed for Modest Ice Cream Cone. Vanilla X, Modest Ice Cream Cone, and we take a plus three Timid Volcarona with Psychic or a plus two Hurricane. We also take two Noivern's Dracos after the drop. So it goes for Draco, it's now minus two. We go, he goes for Draco again. We'll take the hit, we're all set. We also take two Jolly Bandit or Shifu's Close Combat from Volley of the Chance or the Flame Body Burn, which is very nice, we can get that. And we also take a Jolly Electivirus Wild Charge from Full as well. Just to be safe, if it's a Life Orb, I believe we might take Thunder Punch, but I'm not confident about that, don't quote me on it. But yeah, moving on to our next Mon. Honestly, we weren't sure if this was going to come this week, and it's kind of cool that we're bringing it. We're bringing, for the first time in a long, long time, Life Orb Scolipede. I'm super excited for this Poison Jab, Aqua Tail, Super Power, and Mega Horn. We were like, we can't bring this. There's obviously a Ferret Thorn. There's like, I know there's Mew, but Mew doesn't outspeed, but Mega Horn's 85% accurate. There's a Rhyperior. There's a Urshifu. I've set up on Pokemon like Scolipede and Excadrill with an Urshifu Rapid Strike, and the difference is those teams didn't have an Infiltrator Dragapult, so they can't really, it can't really set up on me. So I feel pretty decent about that. 
But Sculpey is very good here. We have speed for the base 100s, the Mew and the Volcarona. We basically outspeed everything that is not a Noivern. And then a plus one, we outspeed everything that is Scarfed plus non-Scarfed Noivern, which is nice. And the whole point of this is to break. We want to get this thing in and break. If we have a chance to get the, the, the Ferrothorn at a percentage where it's pretty weak, let's say it's in range of Superpower or Megahorn, I go for it. The Mew, same deal. The Volcarona, I guess. Rhyperior, yeah, for sure. Basically, we want to get this thing in into a position where it can just click a button and break something. He has no real switching that wants to take multiple attacks from this thing. The best thing he has is like Urshifu, and that's really it. Yeah, nothing else takes two hits. It's kind of crazy. So we want to make sure we can put this into the game plan and make it work as best as possible in this match. But I definitely think we can do it with this set. Life Orb gives me the extra power that we want. We have 28 EVs in speed and 60 in my defense. I had a ton left over for my speed stat, but I decided not to shove it all into my into my my HP because I'm running Life Orb. I want to make sure my HP stat was as large as possible without having the well maximum amount of Life Orb chip. So basically, the way it works is you just take the first two numbers of your HP stat, and that's what you're taking from Life Orb chip every turn. So we're taking 13 points of health from Life Orb every turn, which is not bad compared to if I had just four more EVs or whatever, eight more EVs into my my my, my HP then I would be taking 14, which is too much. I don't want to take too much. I want to take as little as possible. So with this, we then maximize our defense as well, which allows me to take like some random uh, Aqua Jets, let's say, from the Urshifu or a random fighting move or not fighting move, but physical move from the Mew or whatever. Just gives me options. Speed is for those base 100s, like I said. And if I can bring this in one or two times, I'm in such an amazing position to just break his team. Fingers crossed we can get it done. Let's see if we can. Our next Mon. <sighs> Everyone said... Everyone said, all of my front office is like, why are you bringing this? What's the point? And like, I'm like, listen, I think it's not bad. And then the mocks came. And the mocks came and it was, it was okay. <laughs> it wasn't great, but it was okay. And that is going to be Yumta, the Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff is here. If you guys know the reference, let me know. I didn't know the reference, but shout out to Incog and Tone, who, who did know the reference. Um, but Wish, Teleport, Flamethrower, and Thunder Wave. Wish keeps my Primarina healthy. It keeps my Skullpeed a second life. It gives it a second life, basically. It keeps Dragapult healthy and out of range of random Scarfers. Thunder Wave is there as my answer to a setuping Mew. If Mew tries to set up on me, if it's this against Mew, and I think Mew's gonna go for Dragon Dance, or gonna go for, I don't know, Calm Mind or whatever, I Thunder Wave it. If it goes for Sub, fine. I, I teleport out and I go into her sheep. I go into Pulse. We have Infiltrator. I don't think that he runs Sub on anything because we have Infiltrator. And if he runs Sub, then I think he has to run specifically Psychic and Fairy Coverage. That's really, I think, really the best options he has for me. And even then, he can't hit the, the Exo Drill. So maybe he goes Psychic and Ground. Who knows? But regardless, I think we definitely have a way around it with our Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff is just decent here. When you have a Pokemon that has so much HP, that has such a high base HP, what you do is you don't go ahead and just maximize the HP. You maximize the defenses that the, 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 the cannot speak. You maximize the defensive stats. Super important to do that because then you take advantage of those defensive stats and that already really sky high HP. We do have quite a bit of HP investment. And the reason for that is because I want to have one, a leftovers number, but number two, I want to make sure I could take the hits that I want to on the physical side, which I was having a hard time doing. So we want to take a Jolly Band or Shifu's Surging Strikes or Close Combat, which we do. We take two Timid Noivern Hurricanes after leftovers, which is amazing. And we take Blizzard from Specs Vanillix, that's modest, after rocks as well. Wish for recovery, Flamethrower, mostly there because this is probably going to force in the Ferrothorn. I can Flamethrower it, which is nice. And I can paralyze everything else. Rhyperior is a little bit of a pain, but I don't think Rhyperior is going to set up. If it does try to set up, it needs to get to plus four with Rock Polish, so two Rock Polishes against me. And that's how we can outspeed my Dragapult, outspeed my Skullipede, which both have super effective coverage for it, which I feel is probably the best way to handle the uh, the Rhyperior. So yeah, that's going to be our really tough. Frisk is amazing. Frisk was so good for us in the previous mocks that we had. Um, shout out, to, by the way, to Joe, to Incog, and to Meta, all who provided us with mocks. We also had quite a few people hopped in to discuss the, the team itself. We had, uh, who do we have? Where are they? Incog was there. Joe was there. Uh, Jay was there. Owen OG Albino was there. Uh, Tiger was there for a second. Tone and uh, who else? That's it, actually. Yeah, that, that's it. That's We had a ton of people who hopped in gave their two cents on the team. So if you guys want to check out the team builder, the live team builder that we had, by the way, you can check out by becoming a YouTube channel member. So that's that. Moving on, though. Um, very good set. Moving on to our final mod, which is going to be Toph, the Excadrill. Chompleberry this week, honestly, the set that I put the least amount of effort in, we'll call it, is just kind of like, hey, this set could do pretty good, so let's do it. Earthquake, Rock Tomb, Swords Dance, and Rabbit Spin. Rock Tomb is there as like a last ditch effort to slow down a Mew that might be outspeeding things. If it tries to set up on me with the Dragon Dance, for some reason, I can just Rock Tomb it to slow it down, which is nice. It also hits the Noivern, which is only immunity to ground. It's only resist either, and that's good. 
obviously his immunity not resist, but he has no resist. He has wheezing, but I'm mold breaker, so I feel fine against that. If he goes with neutralizing gas, he's still grounded, so that's fine with me. Source Nest is there, obviously really good. Rapid Spin to get rid of the spikes and the rocks that the Ferrothor I'm going to try and get up, and of course to give me that speed boost, which is super nice. Our, we're going max speed, max uh, attack, and the reason we're going with the Jolly Nature is so we can outspeed something like a Adamant Mew. We outspeed Adamant Mew or Shifu, we outspeed Adamant Electivire as well, which a lot of his team has based like 95 to 100, so outspeeding those things if they're not running a Jolly or Timid Nature means that we can get up a really big hit against them, and if I get to plus two, we can really break his team. Trouble Berry is there for a few reasons. Number one is there for like our Shifu's close combat, or Drain Punch or whatever, but the bigger reason is there is for the body press from the um, Ferrothorn, but it's also there in case of like a random Mew attack, which could definitely be coming. But yeah, guys, that's going to be our team for this week's battle. I am pretty excited for this. I'm hoping that it can do, do some work, get us the W. Fingers crossed on that. I'm really thinking we can, but uh, we'll see how it goes. In terms of secret word of the day, what am I thinking for secret word of the day? We're going to say um, Basil. Don't ask me why. Actually, no, I have my basil plant like right next to me. So it's in my office for some reason, but basil, okay? And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it, guys. It is time to battle. Welcome back, everyone. Looking at the team he ends up bringing, there is no Volcarona, there is no Vanillux, amazing. The resistances, or the answers rather, for um, Moltres are kind of limited now, which is dope. I do think that Elite of Ferrothorn or Elite of Rhyperior or even the, I think basically one of the bottom three, the Rhyperior, the Ferrothorn or the Noivern. And if that's the case, I think Prim is the, makes the most amount of sense. Um, yeah. I, I think though I'm going to lead off with Firewall here. It's not as useful now, which is nice. And I can always burn the Rhyperior, which is super good, or U-turn out on it or whatever. But I think that U-turning on the, or burning the Rhyperior is amazing. So I'm going to do that. And if he ends up leading with it, then he ends up leading with it. And so be it. But I feel pretty good about our chances here. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. I don't think we had... We didn't have a single mock that had these six here. Which is fine. We had, I think, two mocks with Greedence. And the one team that brought Rhyperior did not bring Greedence. And I also think they didn't bring Ferrothorn. They brought Electivire over Ferrothorn. And they brought... Uh, what did they bring over? What did they bring over Greedence? I just had all the teams pulled up. I just closed them all for some reason. Doug's thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking hard. He's gonna run out of time. Oh, he made it. He made it just on time. Good shit, good shit. All right. Have not played Jack in a while. Been a hot minute, but fingers crossed. As long as there are no lead of Rhyperior, I am happy. <laughs> no Rhyperior lead, please. No Ripe lead, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think a Will-O-Wisp is pretty free here. I don't think he's going to want to stay in, so I'm going to go for the Will-O-Wisp, expecting the right period to come in. That'll be very nice for us. If he switches out, great. If he stays in, mm. But getting a burn-off on something is very nice for us. Getting a burn-off on this especially is... Not this, but the right period especially is really big for us. Because then it's not as big of a threat to my Pult, to my Prim. Oh, my defensive checks. Even Wiggly Tough. Such as switches out, beautiful, switches out. Rhyperior comes in. Boom, boom. Noivern. That's fine. So we can Willow a spit. We got the burn off on this, which is nice. Okay. Um, part of me wants to click Mystical Fire, part of me wants to just U turn out. If he goes and U turns out himself, then fine. Probably goes into Prim. Probably goes into Rhyperior as I go Prim. Hmm. I think Mystical Fire might be the play here. Because he goes into Rhyperior, and that sucks on Mystical Fire. So I think I have to go for a U-turn here, expecting to go for a U-turn himself or do whatever. But I just need to make sure that he doesn't go for his own, well, back into Rhyperior, because I don't want to double Willowist here. I really don't want to do that. Boom bursts out. Okay. 197 down to 117, did 80 points of health. Okay, 80 points of health. I can go into Roku here, fire off a Dragon Darts. Um, I can go into Yumta. 
Drill is a possibility as well with the Rock Blast. Rock Tomb, rather. Um, but I think Prim is the most obvious switch, as he's going to go hard into Pharaoh. So I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do that, as he takes another round of burn here. And then we can go for a flip turn here, which is my best play in my eyes, because if he does go into the Ferrothorn, then I, I may take Chip, which is okay. I go back into my Moltres, and he just switches out. So he just hard switches. Maybe he's Scarfed. Such a prick. Yeah. Okay, let me quickly take a look at this. Let's actually see quickly, is he going to be Rocky Helmet? The Iron Barbs here. No Rocky Helmet, though. Very nice. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, Moltres against Noivern going for Boom Burst. Boom Burst will do... It makes sense. 80 points of health makes sense. Okay. So we go back into Moltres here. Very freely. And I can go for a will o again. Uh, I think a Mystical Fire is not play though here. I think he knows my answer. I'm just going for will o against this right away, which is something that he, he has to be aware of. So if he stays in, he stays in, but he's not Leftovers. And he's not a Rocky Helmet. He's probably Akaberry, to be honest. But we can burn the Akaberry, which is amazing for the Pult. Which means my Pult won't be paralyzed, because he'll, he'll die. <laughs> What's he going to go for? The only Rock move he has is ro Rollout. That's the one, yeah. Maybe he goes for a knockoff. I'm actually curious about this. I really don't know what he does. If I got the Mystical Fire off on the Noivern, that would have been great. He goes into Noivern again. Yes, he goes into Noivern again. Okay, I'm okay with that. That's some pretty decent... Is that a crit? That's a crit. Okay. Um, I'm going to Roost here. If he tries to trick me, he tries to trick me. Or switcheroo me or whatever. I think I don't think he goes for switcheroo. He's at minus one special attack now. Which means I can take any one hit. I'm good. If he goes for U-turn, I'll be back to full. He air slashes me. 117 down to 71. And we roost back up. Very nice. Okay, and um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's Scarfed. The fact that he's playing it this way, I'm pretty sure he's Scarfed. And I think I'm going to go for a U-turn here. If he goes right here, he goes right here. I Prim, just switches out. Beautiful. Does he go right here? He goes into this thing. Unfortunate. Actually, no. Because I can go into... I can go into Scolipede and click Superpower. Or no, 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 we, we agreed to this. I go into Wigglytuff here. I go Wiggly. I scout, I find out what item he has, and I play from there. He's probably Akka. I'm like 95% sure he's Akka. Shed Shell. For, for what? Whirlpool Prim, maybe? Okay. Well, let's go for the Flamethrower. The most he can do to me is with Heavy Slam. Gyro Ball is like 40 base power against me. What? What's he going to do? If I had a, if I had this thing with a Mystical Fire, oh my god, if I just double Mystical Fire there, it went so good. Stays in, Flamethrower, it's going to do a solid chunk of damage. If my dive is not especially defensive. Leaf Seed, okay. Uh, I think Teleport gets rid of Leech Seed, so I'm just going to go for the Teleport here. He's going to get back a solid chunk from this, isn't he? Oh my god. That's so much health. Well, we Teleport here either way. He's going to Protect. He has to Protect or he dies. So he's revealed Leech Seed. 
and he's revealed. That's it. He's Shed Shell. Which is out. We get the slow teleport off. Beautiful. In comes Wag Wem, which is the Mew. Okay. Well, I have a very, very, very pretty Scolipede with your name on it. It's a light bulb Scolipede. In case you didn't know. I'll take it. And we can fire off that Megahorn right here. I think Megahorn into Aqua Tail could Oko the Rhyperior. Or Tuco, whatever you want to call it. But let's see. Megahorn is going to nuke this, this Mew unless it is specifically Tangaberry. And if it's Tangaberry, at least I know it's not going to be like... It will probably be one for Dragon Dance, right now at least. So I think that I'm okay with this. As long as I connect here. We connect? Do we just KO? Please just KO. Oh, it lit. Motherfucker. <laughs> We called it! We fucking called it. Oh my, we were saying in chat, like, oh yeah, Trick Room is great! He can run Trick Room into Rhyperior as his offensive answer. Or his breaker or whatever. Um, wow. I'm gonna go into Yung Yungta again. Shit. It's gotta have so much investment for that. It has to have so much investment to take that hit. Okay, if it's Impish, it always took the hit. Which is insane. But if it's not like fully physically defensive with an like impish nature or bull nature, whatever you want to call it, then Megahorn has a chance to KO. Wild. I think actually based on this, he's not impish. I think we just got like a, a medium roll. Holy shit. Okay, well, if he goes for teleport, he's got three turns left of... He's got three turns left, that means? If he teleports here? Like, the thing is, I should take the hit. It's like, kick. He switches out. He's hard swapped. I'm okay with this. I'm not mad at this, because you're wasting turns of your trick room. Okay. So this was turn two of trick room. He's got three turns left. Flamethrower, and if he goes into Rhyperior, then he goes into Rhyperior. Switches out. Do we see a Rhyperior here? I think we do. It's Greedent. It's Greedent! Okay, uh, potential Belly Drum Greedent here. Just so you know, I know that's a set. <laughs> Alright, um, question is do I Thunder Wave it? I am going to Thunder Wave here. I'm going to Thunder Wave. We're going to Scout, see what he can do. He's going to have two turns left to Trick Room. After this one, he's going to have, if he Belly Drums, he's going to have one turn left to Trick Room. So I'm not super against that. We legit said, we were joking about it the entire call. We were saying, oh, Trick Room you into, what is it? Belly Drum Greedent. It, <laughs> it's Belly Drum Greedent. No way. No way. It's Belly Drum Greedent. We called it. Wow. Okay. Adamant, level 50, plus 6. Okay, what does Greedent get? Physical. Body Slam. I think Body Slam is the best thing to do to hit my really tough. That just nukes it. That's Skull Speed. It still nukes me. I think he has one turn left. This is his final turn. <sighs> I think I teleport here. Is that what I do? If he goes... Well, he's in a... He's at max HP. How much does Skull he do with superpower? Not enough to KO. Um, how useful is Wigglytuff? I don't think Wigglytuff is as useful anymore as I'd like it to be. So what I'm going to do is go for Flamethrower and wear it down as much as I can. And if he gets full powered, he gets full powered. 
Full para. Trick room is over. So that trick room did not do much for him. And if we can get this thing in range of Skullipede, what we want. Big damage. And it's fully paralyzed again. Oh my god. Okay, we'll go for another one here. We're just trying to chip this. We're just sacking this off. We're just trying to chip it down. Really tough coming in clutch for us. Really tough coming in clutch for us. Under 50. Facade. That's fine. So we down goes Wiggly. First death of the game goes to us. But Wiggly Tough did work. Wiggly Tough did the work. So I can go Heimlich now. Maybe I go Drill. How much is Drill doing? Excavate Drill against Greedent. Do about 40 to 48 with Earthquake if it's max HP. Um, it could just be max defense, but I think going Heimlich is the play here. I think going Heimlich is the play. We have a way to outspeed the Mew. We still have a way to chip down the Urshifu, which is nice. I think just going for Superpower is my play. We should be able to take the KO on this, which is going to be good. Yes, yeah, Superpower comes out. KO. Very nice. So Greedon goes down, but Greedon, Belly Drum Greedon, got a KO. And at this point, he has a grand total of zero resists or immunities to Shadow Ball. Right now, we got to weaken the Rhyperior. Because at this point, everything is in range of Pult except for Urshi and Rhyperior. Once those are in range, Pult can win. And I think Mew cannot freely get a Trick Room off against anything on my team because Trick Room is negative priority, meaning it will always move last outside of like Teleport or whatever. Chow. Okay. Well, here's this thing. Let's find out right now if it is banded. Let's find out if it's banded. In comes Prim. Let's see. Is this thing banded? Bulk up. I'm okay with that. Primarina against Arshifu. Rapid Strike. Let's say if it's, maybe it's Life Orb, let's say that. Life Orb, plus one, fun, or Poison Jab, whatever it gets. Poison, Jab. Oh, if it's Life Orb, that actually KOs, wow. If it's not Life Orb, it's a roll. But, uh, I just go for my Moonblast here. Thunder Punch. If this is Life Orb, we die. Eat it up! Moonblast! It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He prepped for it. Good prep. Um, it basically is still dead. It's in range now, which is what we want. And um, I'll click Moonblast here. He's going to take an extra bit of chip. I, he might even die to Rocky Helmet here. He might even die to Rocky Helmet here. We just see his strikes. So this will get the KO. Okay. Crit mattered. So close. Alright. Um, I think Pult is pretty free here. Pult's our only play, actually, because I don't want to take extra chip. So, down goes Prim, but Prim did its job. Prim did its job. And now we click Shadow Ball. Go for your Aqua Jet if you want. Fine. I think we have him in checkmate here. I'm, I'm not 100% certain, but I'm pretty certain we have him in checkmate. Because Actually, no, because he could be Scarf Noivern. He could be Scarf Noivern. So if I see Noivern come in, I'm switching hard into uh, Moltres. Switching hard into Moltres. So Urshifu drops. If I see Rhyperior as well, I have to switch out as well. Yeah. This thing is Scarf. I know it. I know it for certain. For certain. Let's switch. Let's go to Firewall here. We'll play this game. We'll play this game. We could also be setting up for a Drill endgame. Or, well, like, Drill plus Pult, I think, can 
get us the just need to chip down right here to range of pult or drill. I think with a combination of everything we have, we should be able to do it. Expecting a scarf and waver in here. Do we see a Draco? A Dragon Pulse. Do we take two of these? 146. Oh, we could eat two of these, can't we? Let's roost up. Another Dragon Pulse. This thing is Scarf. I know it's Scarf. I'm so confident it is. Eat it up. And we'll go for another here. If you go right here, you go right here. here. I can willow this bit and go from there. I'll be back at full. It goes into this. Okay. That's fine. I can now... Yeah. I'm okay with this because I can still burn the right period, which is what I want to do. So we're going to go for a... Um, a not a willowist. What's the word I'm looking for? A mystical fire here. Mystical fire is going to come out. It'll get the KO on this. Okay, so down goes the Ferrothorn. It was a lot less annoying than I expected it to be, which is good. I don't like Ferrothorn. Mew dies if it comes in. Ooh, I mean, Mew at speeds. They can roost. That's the Mew. So, I think what I have to do here, though, is Mystical Fire. No, because if, well, if he roosts, then I'm fine. Then I can U-turn and I'll get into my, my Scolipede. If he goes for Trick Room, I outspeed. So I U-turn. I U-turn. He went for Trick Room. He went for Trick Room. There we go. We outspeed. Negative priority on the Trick Room. Beauty. And I think what I do here is I go Drill. Because Drill can take... Well, can Drill take a Flamethrower from Noivern? No, I, whoops, uh, we want Drill against Noivern. We know it's Choice Scarfed. At least I'm pretty sure it's Choice Scarfed. Yeah, we take Flamethrower from it, so I'm fine. I'm going into Drill. And if he goes into Rhyperior, we go for an Earthquake. We have Solid Rock, or he has Solid Rock again on the, 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 the Rhyperior, which is decent. Hmm. Do I try to get the plus two? If he's rock polish on this, I don't want to just lose. And I, that might be what happens. Plus two, Jolly. He's at 202. It outspeeds Pulp. If I rock tomb this, I don't think that helps. Okay. I want to click Earthquake, a Swords Dance here. And do I do that? I don't think it matters. If he's, if he's, if he's Rock Polish, I think he's got the game. If he's Rock Polish, I think he's got the game. I think that's like max HP. Earthquakes me back. Thank you. Thank you for earthquaking me back. Thank you. Okay. That's fine. Oh my god. At least he didn't click rock polish. That would have been a doomsday scenario. But uh, right now I go into Pult. I click Scald. Do I click Scald or I click Dragon Dragon? I mean... I'm sure, it does, I'm sure it doesn't matter, but if he's like Pasho. I mean, it's 37 to 45%. I think going Scald is the play. He could be Pasho, but he could also be Assault Vest. Or, yeah, he could be Assault Vest. He's not Pasho, so he's dying here. 
Okay, so down goes the Rhyperior as well. Amazing. And in comes the Noivern now. We're at max HP, we go hard into Moltres, and we go from there. We go hard Moltres and we go from there. Because at the end of the day, even if you have Trick or Switch or Rule or whatever, we're fine. And Moltres takes two timid Dracos from full. But I think this is going to be a 3-0 win. I think it's going to be a 3-0 win. Everything on the team actually like held its own and did its job. Which is good. Dragon Pulse. Beauty. I think we take three of these, right? We take three of these. Especially after a Mystic Fire. Let's go fire it off. Mystical Fire. Wow. I will take it. The team came through. Wigglytuff actually proved its worth here. I was... Like, the double paralysis on um, the, the Greedent sucked. It, it definitely put it something in range. Put it in range of uh, a Scolipede. But I, I think, honestly, based on what we still had around, we would have been fine. It just was maybe a little bit tougher with the, the two powers. Getting one of them was big because I got the chip that I need to put it in range. But either way, I'm pretty happy with how this game went. We pick up another W plus three to our differential. What is our record? What is the differential? Let's go ahead and pull that up right now because I am actually curious. I think we're four and two plus eight, if I'm not mistaken now. We are 4-2 plus 8, which is awesome. I think we're actually like one of the top 4 seeds right now, which is amazing. There's a lot of really good coaches. We know this to the CGT. It makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of good coaches, but I'm hoping that we can get the job done against the rest of them because the rest of them are final 3 opponents. But anyways, in the meantime, GG's to Jack. Make sure to go check him out. His link is down in the description, just like the rest of the coaches in the CGT. Thank you to my front office for all the help. Thank you to all of you for watching. Thank you to our YouTube channel members, which once again, your boy forgot to pull up the list of YouTube channel members. I should just have the list like pasted to my to my monitor or something, but I, I just don't have that done. Thank you to our YouTube channel members, specifically our level ones. We have Liv, we have Hayes, we have Eric, we have Zeke, our level twos, Terrence, and Red Pudding, that's it. And then our level threes, Volt and Sully. Shout out to all of them for being well, YouTube channel members supporting the channel means a lot. And thank you to all of you for watching as well. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Do all that great stuff. Let me know what you guys thought of the battle down below. And as always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you all next time.